The Home Health Quality Improvement National Campaign welcomes you to this short educational program called Diabetes Self-Care. In this program, we will discuss some tips and tools to help you manage your diabetes better. There are many self-management tools, but some of the more important ones include hemoglobin A1C, foot care, eye exams, blood pressure, cholesterol or lipid levels, which are considered the fats in your blood. Hemoglobin A1C is an important tool that doctors and your healthcare team will use to determine if you are pre-diabetic or have type 2 diabetes. The A1C, as we will call it, is actually a three-month look back in history of your everyday blood sugars. When your doctor requests blood work that includes an A1C, there are people in the lab that actually count the number of sugar molecules on each of your red blood cells. As you can see, the higher your A1C, the more sugar molecules there are on your red blood cell. If you would like to have a quick look and an easy way to keep better track of your A1C and blood sugars, then take a look at this chart. This chart can serve as a reference to you and help you follow your A1C levels more closely. For example, on the left side of the chart, locate the blood glucose of 140. It has the red circle around it. Now look on the right side of the chart, locate the corresponding A1C number. What do you see? The A1C level is 6.5. So, if you are averaging around 140 blood glucose levels, you would expect your A1C level at 6.5. If you see an increase in your blood glucose levels, then there will be an increase in your A1C level as well. The next topic of discussion is foot care. With diabetes, there can be a decrease in blood flow to the feet, so it is very important to take care of them. Examine your feet every day by looking at them. If you cannot bend over, use a mirror. Place the mirror on the floor and place your foot over it, moving your feet around until you have looked at your entire foot. Make sure you look for redness, sores, or cuts of any kind. When applying lotion or powder to your feet, make sure not to put them between your toes because it may become too moist and cause sores to form. After bathing, use a pumice stone to remove the dead skin from your feet and to avoid the cracking on your heels. Only use the pumice stone in one direction so you are not rubbing the skin. If your toenails are soft, you can cut them using a straight-edged nail clipper. Do not use a nail clipper that is curved. If you need to file your nails, file straight across, but not in a sawing motion. If your nails are hard, it is best to see a podiatrist or have your doctor cut them. If possible, you should wear white cotton socks to absorb moisture. Always look to see if there is any drainage from your sores that have appeared. And lastly, do not go barefoot to prevent any injury on your feet. Ask your health care provider for a handout on caring for your feet. Also learn how to pick the right shoes so they don't rub and cause sores to open up. As a person with diabetes, it is also important to care for your eyes. A yearly dilated eye exam is necessary to prevent diabetic retinopathy, which is a disease of the retina. Diabetic retinopathy is when there is damage to the tiny blood vessels in the back of the eye. These tiny blood vessels in the retina will bleed and cause damage to the retina. If it is left untreated, it may cause blindness. Laser surgery will help prevent the blood vessels from bleeding and reduce some of the damage that has occurred. Diabetes also puts you at risk for developing cataracts, which is a clouding of the lens which affects vision. Diabetes also increases your risk for developing glaucoma, which is elevated pressure inside of your eye. This is similar to a sink that is clogged. Caring for your eyes when you have diabetes is something that everyone must do to prevent these complications from occurring. It is also very important to make sure your blood pressure is under control when you have diabetes. The recommendation for blood pressure for people with diabetes is 130 over 80. 
When talking about blood pressure, the top number refers to the amount of pressure in your arteries when the heart is pumping. This is called systolic pressure. The bottom number refers to your blood pressure when your heart muscle is resting between beats. This is called diastolic pressure. Controlling your blood pressure will help to prevent further complications. The last thing for self-care management we will discuss is knowing what your cholesterol and triglyceride levels are and if the levels are good or bad. Too much cholesterol in your body can form plaque which will adhere to the walls of the arteries causing them to narrow and gradually become blocked, potentially leading to heart attack and stroke. Triglycerides are the major form of fat stored in the body. Cholesterol in your body has two sources, diet and what your body produces. A diet high in saturated fats will increase your cholesterol levels, but if you eat a diet low in saturated fats, it will help decrease your cholesterol levels and reduce your risk of heart attack or stroke. Your body will also create cholesterol as well. It is important to get your lab work done as ordered. So here is an easy way to remember your numbers. Cholesterol should be less than 200. Triglycerides should be less than 150. LDL or lousy cholesterol should be less than 100. HDL or happy cholesterol should be greater than 50 for women and greater than 40 for men. So if you subtract each value by 50, it becomes an easy way to know your lipid numbers. The more you know about your health, the better you'll be able to prevent complications. Here are some key things to remember. Be sure to know your A1C level. Take care of your feet. Get a dilated eye exam every year. Keep your blood pressure under control and also know your cholesterol or lipid levels. HHQI would like to thank you for taking the time to learn more about some ways to manage your diabetes. This material was prepared by Quality Insights, the Medicare Quality Innovation Network Quality Improvement Organization, supporting the Home Health Quality Improvement National Campaign under the contract with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services as an agency of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The views presented do not necessarily reflect CMS policy. Publication number 11 Scope of Work, West Virginia, HHMMD 042516A.